Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Conversations on Conversations, where each week we explore topics to help us have more powerful conversations with ourselves and others. I'm your host, Sarah Noel Wilson, and joining me today is my my newest friend, colleague, trainer, (laughs) uh, Jess McCauley. And we're going to be talking about the importance of movement as it relates to mental health, as it relates to aging, as it just relates to living a better life. So let me tell you a little bit about Jess, and then we'll get into our conversation. Born and raised on a farm in Blairsburg, Iowa, Jess McCauley spent her early years in nature, camping, and riding horses. A lover of art, she pursued graphic design at DMAC in Ankeny, Iowa, before venturing into the food and beverage industry. For 16 years, she worked in various roles, serving, bartending, and managing. This journey not only forged lasting connections, but also provided countless valuable lessons, sparking a passion for connecting with people on a deeper level. Jess began her personal fitness journey 13 years ago, realizing the positive impact exercise had on her mental health and her body confidence. And we're going to hear more about her journey as we kick into this. She's certified in behavioral change and correctional exercise. Jess has worked with clients from 3 to 94, believing in the holistic benefits of constant movement. She advocates that mindful, regular exercise can elevate every aspect of life, physically, mentally, and emotionally. She also lives with her husband, Matt, in West Des Moines. They're two dogs. Dexter and Bandit. Hi, Jess. Welcome to the show. Hi, Sarah. I'm I'm so excited. So, just full disclosure: the the way that Jess and I were connected is um, like a lot of people over the pandemic. <laughs> I stopped moving uh, when I moved to working remotely. But let's be really honest: I wasn't probably moving that much more beforehand, and I just realized how much not only muscle did I lose, but just I was tired a lot. And, um, and so in a, in a, a pers- well, what do I want to say, like, in wanting to improve myself, we discovered an organization called Gym Guys, which I'm going to be honest, I can say this just can't don't love the don't love the name. But <laughs> because Gym Guys is all about working with people who maybe can't get to a gym, are intimidated by a gym, maybe don't have the schedule that allows them to work with a personal trainer where they come to your house. So we've been working with Jess for about nine, 10 months now, about eight, nine months. And, uh, and it's been really transformative for us. So I wanted to bring her on so we could talk about, um, you know, as we kick off this new year, not necessarily like exercise for like weight loss or all of that, but just movement as medicine. So Jess, what else should we know about you? Oh, goodness. I can't sit still. <laughs> if you haven't noticed. <laughs> so for people who are uh, listening, you know, she and exactly. I will both be just like fidgeting in our seats and moving around. And she's a busy I'm body. I'm looking at a foam roller right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, I, uh, I just enjoy connecting with people. It's a really vulnerable experience going into people's homes. Yeah. And connecting on a, a really, I mean, you get pretty close with folks and just how they're dealing with their day-to-day lives and like connecting with the social aspect, the hopefully pain relief, yeah. their physical and mental well-being. I really enjoy what I do. And I'm we, really lucky to be able to do it. Yeah. No, that's something we can, we can talk about a little bit later because it is a unique experience. Like you're literally coming into someone's house and you're walking them through movements and showing them movements. So, so take us back 13 years. What started this journey for you? Because one of the things that I have appreciated about the partnership we have with you is that this idea of fitness, which can be really intimidating for those of us who aren't athletic naturally, or that's not our background, but just this idea of like movement is medicine. So take us back and what what was your journey um, to this point? I started like everybody does, just the Shape magazine. I think it was one of the Girls from the Hills cast just one of those circuits. It was lunges. It was how to get your tight core, Mm. your back then it was thin everything. So anything glute focus wasn't the goal. It was to be thin. And it was really truthfully started as vanity. And as I started to hide in my room with my shake weight (laughs) and my (laughs) magazine clip, I noticed I was in a lot 
better state of mind. Mm. So I'd go to work in my ability to be tolerant of certain customers and guests. I was a lot more carefree, just giddy, yeah. I guess. Like yeah. before that science came out, it just, I, I performed better. I felt better. My body confidence was better. Uh, so I started to plateau from doing the same workout every day and that just sparked the learning. So I did weights, more weights. I did used to be cardio was how you lost fat. And that's back in 2008. It was cardio was everything. So yeah. I wasn't sure if it was going to work, but it did. It, it really helped right away mentally and mood wise. And I was young, so I don't know that there was too much stress. Sure. Other yeah. Than yeah. Pay how, your rent and car. So how, so how, <laughs> you know? how has your journey with that shifted as you've navigated injuries, as you've also worked with people, you know, when you think about, and I, I really appreciate your honesty. I can tell that you're like, ah, it really started from a vanity. Like it was a Hills actor and I wanted to look like them. I mean, like, let, I mean, let's just own it. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. And, uh, you know, we maybe have a conversation about like our <laughs> culture obsession with thinness and fat phobia, all of that, but maybe not for today. But but your relationship with movement shifted and the work that you do with clients is different. I mean, at least the work that we experience with you is very different. And so talk to us about like what has become clear for you now, not only for yourself, but as you've been working with more people, right, from your ages three to 94. Uh, I would say there was a huge passion as far as the mental uh, mental rewards. So endorphin rush, I really liked high intensity and then life humbles you as you age yeah. and you experience, <laughs> if you experience an injury that takes you out of work, like I did, um, from repetitive movement patterns, I was doing a lot of burpees with sure. push ups, and it was really wonderful. And that was valuable in all the whole experience, but then going to work and serving bartending and everything basically, was stuck in a forward position just from work, from pattern overload. And I actually was told I could not bartend, serve, or work that industry mm. anymore because my back pain was related to that. Mm. It was recommended that I didn't lift the way I was lifting, work in the industry that I had already worked and developed in, and that quite literally provided the lifestyle that my husband and I had obtained over the years, it was, it was really devastating. Yeah. So going through injury yourself mm -hmm. a little bit, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, it can really mess with your, your, uh, your self-worth. Yeah. Your perceived self, your perceived, self -worth. yeah, yeah. And all the things that I enjoyed, I thought were being taken away. Sure. So I had a pity party few months and some mental hurdles, well, probably more so than physical, but being told there was an absolute no for any of the things that I did leading up to that point was really hard. Yeah. So, uh, physical therapy, it just wasn't the right fit. Just like anything, yeah. a hairdresser, yeah. uh, <laughs> a doctor, uh, you know, a trainer sometimes isn't you guys, if you don't have chemistry with someone or they don't like the same movements as you do, it sometimes it's just not a good fit. So I did not have a good experience and I thought I was going to be like this forever. And then I just kind of got back to let's focus on if, if nobody can fix me, I, I'll, it's on me, I guess. Mm. <laughs> so if I could obsess over the feeling of the endorphin rush, all of that, could I put that obsession into learning breathing, gentle breathing techniques, stretches? Uh, it got to the point with pain and I had arthritis uh, diagnosed in my cervical spine mm. and both bone spurs, uh, C4, C5, C5, C6. So tickling nerves, numbness, numbness down the fingers um, and I misunderstood all of that. If you hear the word bone spur, it's quite, it's confusing. You think that's a death sentence. Sure, sure. <laughs> you're in your 20s. Uh, but honestly, I, movement honestly was medicine. The more I 
rested and iced it, the worse it got. It sure. felt like my head was going to pop off of my body because it didn't have any muscles holding it up. And my spine was deteriorated quite advanced for the age that I was. Yeah. It was late twenties, yeah. mid late twenties. So yeah, I learned, uh, one by one, just things that worked, things that didn't, um, and that I was going to be the one that was going to make me better. And that was all that, that's all that I could do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you speak to, I mean, anyone who's experienced some kind of major injury, but particularly in your situation, an injury that not only is taking you away from a hobby that you've developed, but literally your occupation, you know, what you were good at, what your identity, right. As a, as a being in the restaurant industry and, there's a lot of loss with that. And I think that, you know, when we think about, again, this being like, how do we talk to ourselves? How do we support other people? Um, we had a previous guest, Neha Sumput, that talked about, you know, just really navigating like chronic migraines and just how exhausting that can be, how much of a burden it can feel, and also the loss of identity, right? Like, I can't imagine being in, you know, late 20s and going, oh, I have severe arthritis. I can't do the job I'm supposed to. How, you know, you talked a little bit about like, okay, I need to, to take care of myself. I need to, to do this. What, what beliefs did you have to let go of? If, if where your journey started was like intense, right? Very focused on the visible to now, now it's more about health and now it's more about um, like, what were some of the beliefs you had to let go either about yourself, uh, what health looked like, even what movement looked like that I had to learn it all at once. You oh, know, the sure. Yeah. <sighs> when you build up like with fitness journeys, the start is humbling. So that feeling of starting over again was really tough. Um, but I didn't have to start and know everything. Yeah. So God bless the internet. Right. So just, just trying to really just stop, stop the absolute thinking yeah. the, I know nothing and the frustration had to go because I was very frustrated sure. and that causes, you know, injury depression is really real. Yeah. It was just, just, you know, if I'm going to be in pain anyway, <laughs> what movements can get mm -hmm. me out of this funk, mm -hmm. but not, decline the progress I had made from a, you know, it, it was physical therapy movements or even just uh, accessory work is what I like to call it now. Cause when I say rehab movements to someone that's not injured, it doesn't set well. So mm. joint maintenance, yeah. I had to learn joint maintenance. Uh, so it wasn't that I was so broken. I couldn't fix. I really had to stop thinking that. Yeah, uh, sure. Cause it does feel like that way for a while. Yeah. And I had to stop saying it out loud Yeah, to other people. Sure. That was a hard thing. Sure. Cause it, when you speak about yourself that you're broken or that I have arthritis and I can't, I had to get rid of the word. I can't yeah. because some things I shouldn't do, but I could, Yeah, but it's not going to help long term. So, yeah, that, you know, when I, so when I experienced my frozen shoulder, I would be like, ah, it's my bad shoulder, you know? And my therapist is like, stop calling it bad. It's just a shoulder. It just needs to be worked on and stretched and all of that. <laughs> like, and But it's hard. But, you know, I mean, in that, that point you made of injury depression is very, very real. I feel like I am I'm witnessing that with, uh, I mean, I say this with love. My mother probably is like a year overdue for a knee replacement. And you, I can see the impact that it has, like having to manage that chronic pain, having to manage the limited mobility um, and 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 to adjust what can you do uh, and to, you know, there's some grief there, too, like especially if the issues you have or are can't necessarily be resolved. It's there is a grief of, oh, I can't do that anymore. Um, and how do I how do I move forward? When you think about, um, like, I, it's interesting to hear the language you use of like accessory or or joint, and and it's funny because I'm you know I'm forty I'm forty two, 
And now I'm thinking about how do I take care of this body so 50 year old Sarah will feel better. Uh, and that was not like 10 years ago, if you're like, we're going to do joint prevention or whatever, <laughs> I'd be like, ah, I'm young. Like, <laughs> it's fine. Even though, you know, like I wasn't even then. Um, so for people who who may be intimidated, for people who may feel overwhelmed or maybe even have the belief that like movement and fitness needs to look a certain way, right? It is for uh, purposes of like just how we look. What would you recommend uh, they start or where would you recommend they start? Uh, just starting. I mean, it's the start that stops most people, right? Yeah. But I, if I could go and do over yeah. and learn things in what I would think would be the proper integration. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm stubborn and I learned backwards. Uh, <laughs> I would say the thing I was missing for a decade mm. of my own fitness was as silly as it sounds breath mm. because if you think of how long you can go without food and a lot of those questions people start with health how long without food how long without water but how long can you go without breathing that it's just not long <laughs> so when people exercise we tend to hold our breath yeah especially when we strain so that really creates some bad habits and that that caused a, a lot of pain. Yeah. I'm sure of breath would be a, the first thing I would, if I were to start over mm. how to get your fight or flight to calm down, um, how to not, you know, tense mm -hmm. up and carry all the strain. I, I had no idea how to breathe. When I lifted, my sister went with me to the gym and she said, stop holding your breath. And I, I was, I am. <laughs> so then I, you know, what? Well, how do you breathe when you lift? Yeah. If you Google that, my goodness, like it, it's too much. So breathing. So, you know, learning when to inhale and exhale and another trainer, you know, I, I asked when I started working in a big box gym, uh, it was a trainer I really admired still do. I said, what do you tell your clients? You know, cause you can look at pictures and videos and if you're, you're just watching the movement, and then they come to the gym and they're just learning from watching you do the movement. What benefit? Why couldn't you just watch a YouTube mm, video? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. for free. Uh, and they said, well, you're going to overwhelm them. So, yeah. So I try to just, you know, this is the movement. Inhale, you know, exhale at the hardest part. If they're overwhelmed with that, I said, just breathe. Yeah. Just don't hold your breath is the only. That's how I would start. Yeah. No, I love that. I, and you're right. I, I mean, <laughs> I, I always joke that as a theater major, I took like classes on breath work, you know, that that was such an integral part of endurance and being able to sustain and being able to uh, project and, you know, and some of that you forget. And when you are working out, or even if you're like lifting something heavy, or you're doing something stressful, even if it's emotionally stressful, it's really easy for us to just hold in our breath. And that that's definitely something that I've learned through our work is just that importance of essentially like when you're at the which is like, it's kind of a beautiful metaphor, actually, that when you're dealing with the hardest point of it, when you're doing the hardest part of the rep, that's when you want to exhale. Uh, that's when you want to release. And isn't that a great metaphor for life? Like when we're in the hardest, when we're facing something really hard, how do we use that as a mom to go? <sighs> And, and so, you know, something that you do a lot with us is that, that, that mind and body connection. And so I'm curious to explore that a little bit further, because it isn't just, you know, breathing isn't just because, oh, well, it feels good because we're taking a breath, right? There's a lot that's happening chemically. There's a, hot, a lot that's happening, m happening m with our muscles um, to allow us to be able to release or connect more effectively. So when you talk about this idea of mind body connection for the lay person, the pedestrian, what the hell is that? <laughs> uh, so uh, the neuromuscular system, if we're going to go back yeah. to science class. <laughs> I, I love it. Let's nerd out, Jess. Nerd out with yeah, me. I love, that's my thing. I love it. <laughs> your brain has to tell your muscles to move. Yeah. So mind muscle connection, our glutes, 
like right now I'm sitting and my hip flexors are tight. We just are in these positions that are stuck. So for instance, since you can see my arm, so your neck and traps get tight and say you're going to go lift a shoulder press. A lot of times it goes into our tight neck muscles. If you really think about the muscle that you're trying to work and there's science now that shows if you touch the muscle, mm -hmm. you're trying to work. Your brain has to not just auto go to your traps, your neck or your tight neck. It has to, you have to really think about the muscle and <laughs> turn it on. So your brain is sending a neurotransmitter to that muscle to contract, to lift the weight. So mind muscle connection is difficult if you don't, mm. if you're not sure how to do that, it does sound silly, yeah. but there's different techniques. Uh, we've tried all of the weird ones that are all very unconventional. <laughs> yeah. The touching the muscle, it's a real thing, folks. Like yeah. when you want to work a muscle more, touch it. And it's, well, the thing that when I, so when I had my frozen shoulder and I just go back to that because that's part of my recent lived experience. So if people have never experienced a frozen shoulder, it's literally where you just lose access to any kind of movement, um, couldn't brush my hair, couldn't dress myself, was in an incredible amount of pain. And it takes about a year and a half to two years to recover. And part of part of the therapy, this is when I first learned about the mind muscle connection, is that there are times when the injury, when an injury happens, where you actually lose that connection. And you have to retrain your brain basically to be able to send a signal down to your whatever it is. And that was so fascinating to me of like that it's not just from a standpoint of being able to do an exercise properly, but it's really, you know, think about it as just like we're being really intentional about movement and there are things we can do that uh, that can disrupt that. And so I literally had to retrain my brain to learn how to move my arm again in a way that I had moved it for 40 years before. Um, but because of the severity of the pain, my brain's like, we're shutting that off. <laughs> we're, not, we're not doing that anymore. And, you know, and there's something also connecting back to the mental health of, again, one of the things that I appreciate in our work together is that it isn't about quantity. It isn't about how much you can lift or how much how many reps you can do. But it's about that quality. It's about that really, I almost think of it like a mindful practice uh, in how we work with you and that intentionality that obviously not only helps you not injure yourself, but it puts you back into your body. I feel like we spend a lot of time as humans not in our body. We spend a lot of times just like going through the motions. We know we, we know we spend a lot of time on autopilot, but we're just like disconnected from how do we feel? How are we showing up? And and I'm just like curious to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, it is a huge problem yeah. because of you know, we have a computer in our hands all day long yeah. with our cell phones and it's really easy to get, uh, into a state where you're just constantly thinking of the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. And I don't know if everyone experiences this, but it tends to throw me into kind of a depressed state yeah. where I'm just then not really feeling anything. I'm just burnt out, exhausted, uh, constantly feeling like I'm, even if you sleep, you know, you're distracted. So exercise, mind, muscle connection, that's a way to fight that back. And yeah. if you can listen to your music and get your brain chemicals going and get your breath to connect and you're actually feeling the brain connect with certain muscles because you have to consciously think more about that to get more value out of a movement. Uh, it really does help with your mental state. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just making it's very therapeutic. It's, you know, it's uh, uh, one of the things my therapist actually, uh, as I've been exploring various things on my personal journey of healing and releasing shame or recovering from trauma is that's that's one of the things she talks about is like the more we can get in touch with our body that actually can be very healing and even just as simple as the touching of the muscle like yes that that helps you engage that muscle but also it's just making you so much more aware 
Um, and again, just more present, not as disconnected, because I feel like when I'm disconnected from my body, I feel disconnected in other ways, or, or I feel like I'm in a sprint, like I feel very jittery, um, instead of being just more physically grounded. Exactly. And I really like, uh, with any therapeutic method, with PTSD, if there's trauma, when you're triggered, and I experience if you've ever had trauma triggers something that's could be a picture, a word, anything, a smell, um, a sound, your heart rate mm-hmm. goes through the roof. Mm-hmm. You you're out of your body completely. So any trigger, the only way to change your state, because your heart, your triggers are bound to happen, yeah. right? The only way to get out of that state is to manipulate your energy Mm. and, or use your breath. So really feel your breath, uh, you know, when they tap. So that's Mm -hmm. kind of that mind muscle Mm -hmm. connection as well. And when you're listening to, if you're listening to your playlist and it's music you like, then you can start to get out of that, uh, trauma trigger and get back into your senses kind of. Mm -hmm. So working out is real. Gosh, it's, you know, sometimes I'll work out a little too much. So physically, maybe not sure. the healthiest. Yeah. However, mentally, if I'm experiencing a trigger and I've got to get on with my day, it's, you know, that you can only go so many days with experiencing that, that you're not in big trouble with life. Yeah. <laughs> so if, gosh, you know, it, it's really difficult to work out, but I just have to talk myself. If I'm having a really bad day or I'm triggered and I'm, my brain's starting to take me back and ruminate. Um, the only way really is pick a good playlist, go breathe. And if I work out, uh, my brain can then, Oh, Oh, it's, you know, you go do something. Say you're going to shower after your workout. You're a totally different person. In my opinion, I am at least. (laughs) Yeah. It's the, it's the, I love the, um, practice of, there are times when we can navigate things inside out and then there are times when we need it outside in, right? There are times when we can hold different perspectives. We can think differently about a situation, whether that's we're navigating anxiety or you and I, you know, we've talked offline about like OCD and panic disorders. And, and then there are times when you just need it to be outside in and, you know, and, and similarly that, whether it's going for a walk or literally physically grounding yourself. Sometimes that's me. If I get really spirally, it's like, I just literally need to lay on the floor and just breathe and re-anchor myself. Yeah. Cause it's that outside in like to just start to disrupt that uh, parasympathetic nervous system that, or the sympathetic nervous system rather that is getting, you know, all frazzled. One of the things, uh, one of the things that we've talked about, and it's something that we don't talk about a lot is uh like so we talk about like the health of the muscles right and how people look how they you know like how fit they like how do they feel how do they fit in their clothes all of that but there is a part of our body that's really really important and both men and women have this and we do not talk enough about strengthening our pelvic floor muscle some people get weird about it or giggly about it but we all have a pelvic floor muscle and it is critical for our well-being and we don't talk enough about how to like keep it strengthened and so I know that that's something you're also passionate about it's not again it's not just about the like external health it's the internal health too so can you just like what's the pelvic floor muscle what's the value of it and and how do we strengthen it or keep it keep it healthy Right. Okay. So the pelvic floor will go to anatomy. Yeah. Um, that's something if I'm starting with a new client, it's really important to me because it, when you say something's life changing, I know that sounds dramatic. However, <laughs> it was life changing. You know, uh, I had saw something online with, uh, using your exhale to wrap your, transverse abdominis and your um, and I was lost or <laughs> did not have a clue. So speaking of breath and the rabbit hole of, you know, looking anywhere on the internet to figure out how exactly I'm supposed to breathe. Uh, that was part of the discovery. And it's, it's like, struck, I struck gold. Mm. <laughs> so 
it's really underrated and especially in gosh, modern medicine and fitness, uh, uh, there's a little bit of resources now for postpartum mothers yeah, yeah. after they have a baby, but not until there's extreme dysfunction. Yeah. Um, and surgery is what they sell them with pelvic floor mesh, but that's not when it's problematic or the, the only time um, I have never birthed a child and ju- you shouldn't pee a little when you jump rope. And yeah. I, that still started to occur. Yeah. So it's just, you know, you you get comments like, oh, you're too young for that. Or you wouldn't know you've never had a baby. Sure, but men have a pelvic floor as well. So, <laughs> you know, when they get different issues with continent incontinence, with uh, hernia is usually mm-hmm. what men have if they're mismanaging their breath and air pressure yeah. in their abdominal cavity. So with women... Uh, For instance, myself, when I was lifting really heavy weights, um, I started to experience what I thought was my abs were getting shredded in a good way (laughs) Uh, and in a bad way they were. So there was a, you know, separating and they were literally getting shredded. They weren't like, yeah, yeah. they were literally (laughs) shredding in a bad way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, if you have a large space in your what you would call your lania alba. (laughs) But your your ab muscles. We all want a six pack, and we want the the visual abs. Sure. However, some that's people do. Actually, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. No, I know. That's what society sell, yeah. society right. sells us that that we should all want yes. that. Yeah. Yes. So what we do is the opposite of what we should be doing: is suck in, um, pull the belly button to spine, and I'll even use that term sometimes. Brace your core. How do you do that when you don't know where to start? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Um, so your core muscles are your pelvic floor, your diaphragm, your multifidus, which is in your back, mm. <laughs> uh, your in, inner and outer obliques. Uh, and when you say things like pelvic floor, that's what you would use to stop peeing. Yeah. Sometimes with men, I say toilet muscles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and with breath, you want to manage that pressure in your abdominal cavity. Or, you know, if you do something and you are not breathing correctly and you're not holding your core, you haven't learned yet how to hold your core. What happens is the air pressure com- bulges out, causes a hernia, and or abdominal separation. Or with women, we really start to get uncomfortable and our sexual organs yeah. can push downward. Yeah. So it, it's just uncomfortable. So that's so important and it's very undertaught. I have three certifications from uh, very credible uh, institutions. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and never once was that covered. Yeah. Um, and it's not in gyms. Uh, powerlifting, they do a different kind of breath and that's great. Uh, but what if you don't want to lift, you know, deadlift your body weight or more? Yeah. what if you just yeah. want to simply feel more comfortable? Um, it can actually impact your sexual health, yeah. your, well, I was just going to, like, to... if you're willing to go there, I, I think that's oh, yeah. like, let's, <laughs> l- let's oh, yeah. like talk about that, particularly with women. Yeah. You know, the, the yeah, I mean, the, the pelvic floor is not only important, right, for us to be able to uh, control our bladder, but if we have too tight of a pelvic floor, right, or if we are experiencing a lot of anxiety, that can make uh, intercourse or, right, like, really painful. And so, so I, I'm starting to see more... Uh, not only more physical therapists focused from a postpartum perspective, but even just from a standpoint of releasing uh, so that uh, sexual relations can be even more pleasurable for women. But there's a huge relationship between that. That, like, that was something. And again, like that's something that I've learned on my personal journey, too, from the standpoint of if you have a lot of anxiety, if you have a lot of shame, if you have right, like all of that is tightening up and it makes it very it can make it very difficult Um, And really impact your ability to be present, your ability to experience pleasure, your, you know, um, X, Y, and Z. Well, right. And in love and marriage, we're all adults. Sex is a part of emotional 
connection, especially for women. So if you're not, you can become really hard, hard on yourself. Like this should be a activity that connects you know, a couple deeper if it or not. I mean, like, I'm very much like I don't yuck anyone's yum. Like, you know, if it's not a relationship, that's cool, too. So (laughs) and you still should be able to feel safe, good, relaxed, enjoy it. Right. Yeah. So when it yeah, that is a big problem is um, it used to be Kegel and just hold the Kegels and hold the Kegels, which is actually problematic, just like if you did too many, if you only did chest press. Sure. So if you only do Kegels, you are isolating a muscle when your body doesn't move like that. Yeah. You're, you're a movement system. So everything should work systematically mm. and it should, your pelvic floor should relax and lengthen and contract and strengthen ideally. So we get in trouble when we're too flexed, right? So stress can do that with pelvic floor, then your hips, everything starts to become tense. Um, emotions get stored in your muscles. Yeah. So hips, pelvic floor area, shoulders, neck, and it can be years. It can, it, the threat is far, like long gone, Yeah. but your body does not forget muscle wise, uh, trauma or stress yeah. or emotional pain in it. It happens with, you know, if you're running your business and you're stressed, if you just had a baby and you're not sleeping and you're stressed, if you're and men and women, um, it's, you know, experiencing if you do have physical therapy specifically for pelvic floor, which those do exist now, I have heard from female clients that they cried, you know, they just, because it was such a release and they had no idea why they were acting what was wrong. It yeah. just was so much tension stored in the muscles. Yeah. So it's just really important to learn how to relax it. That's just as important to learn how to strengthen your pelvic yeah. floor and to protect your, all of your muscles, your, you know, and get more out of your movement. Yeah. So quality of life, quality of movement. Yeah. It's, that was, that was such a profound insight for me when I 10 years ago was diagnosed well almost 11 years now I guess with panic disorder it was the first time I had gone to a therapist and I I remember being I asked her I said why why is this happening now I'm literally in a job that I love I'm no longer going to grad school while working full-time for all intents and purposes my life is pretty great right now I'm like why am I losing my shit (laughs) and she was like I want to do an assessment (laughs) of like really common stressful events. And I want you to tell me if in the last two to three years you've experienced. And, you know, and it was things like even positive stress, moving, uh, getting a new job. Very exciting. Stressful. Losing somebody. Stressful. And when she started to go through this list and I was like, what? I check off a lot of those. And and that's when she explained our body holds stress for like at least two years, which is so... That was so eye-opening to me, and we might not even realize it, and that that being able to move isn't just about physical. It's not just about wanting to look a certain way. When we talk about the mental health component, some of it is, and again, this isn't woo-woo. This is hard science. Like, the body keeps, you know, the stress in, and um, and. And, it, you know, the other thing you said that was really interesting is that I, I don't know that I've thought about this, is that we are, how did you say it? Like, we're a system movement, muscle system. You said a, a muscle yeah. system, right? Like, yeah. because it's problematic <laughs> if we only that. work one thing. Can you say more about that? Yeah. Uh, movement system. Core, for instance, if you're thinking you're going to strengthen your core with crunches or uh, leg lifts, that is not just abs, right? You you actually need your breath to integrate with your, so your lungs, actually, your lungs, you, your diaphragm, if you think about uh, voice, yeah. uh, when they cover diaphragmatic breathing yeah. in theater, your breath and your lungs, your diaphragm, your pelvic floor, move integrated. So your pelvic floor, when you're exhaling with any lifting movements or core movements, you would want to 
imagine your pelvic floor like a telescope and bring from the pubic bone Mm. up and integrating your scapula, your shoulder blades are floating bones. So the muscles around your shoulder blades have to come into play with your core and how they're positioned for different movements can enhance the movement or take it away. Yeah. See, I just love the complexity of humans, but also like our human body too. I, I just have to say this. I'm guessing many people listening to this were trying to breathe like telescopically (laughs) as you were describing it. Cause I was like, Oh, I'm totally doing it. (laughs) when you're talking about the giggles or whatever, I'm like, it's okay, people, if you're like doing this along with us, um, as we talk about it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that idea, again, uh, that, that's, that's why I love that that mantra you have of movement is medicine, it's being connected to the whole body. It's that, f- that being able to be functional, at whatever level you can be, you know, that's one of the things, again, that I've appreciated in our work is that there are times when it's like, Jess, we're coming off really tough week. We we got a little bit in the can, but like, let's do something. So at least we're still moving. And uh, that's been really helpful when I think about the relationship I'm having with movement is just like some, like any movements better than none. And instead of thinking about it as like, oh, my goal is to lose this many pounds or to lose this many inches. It's like, no, my goal is to just move and to move yeah. intentionally and to move thoughtfully and to be connected with my breath. And, um, and boy, do you need to remind yourself of that, like all the time, you know, cause it's so easy to be, to be disconnected. Jess, yeah. I feel like we need to leave people with like, all right, focus on your breath. Well, Think about yeah. your pelvic floor in a way that you never yeah. have before, because it will serve you really, really well. And that mind body yeah. connection, like those are yeah. those are the three kind of like practices I think could be valuable. Yeah. Um, yes. And consistency, like you were yeah. saying, you the importance you've in the relationship you're having with movement. Consistency wins every, every time. Yeah. I, it, intensity, I used to get very hard on myself and if I wasn't excelling in more weight or more reps or mm-hmm. better time um my brain felt disappointed in myself sure but listening to your body and getting into your breath you're going to have better luck with speaking of just brain chemistry cortisol levels rise when you do high intensity workouts sure they can stay that way Sure. Uh, so on days you're not feeling energetic, you do. Not, there's a time to push yourself. Yeah. And I'm not saying that's not valuable, but when you're feeling just beat down, it might be more be- beneficial to do breathing, mind muscle connection. You're getting the good, the feel good endorphins. You're releasing stress, so you're not storing fat. Yeah. Because if you're just stressed all the time, as we age, you're really not ready for that. <laughs> that stress. It doesn't matter how much you work out, you can run, 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 do burpees and all of this intense movement. And some people still find that they're gaining fat and they're very confused. That, yeah. And it's happened to me. It's you're very stressed and yeah. your body can't handle yeah. that and you're, you store cortisol is not healthy. So, yeah, yeah. as you age, that's something you maybe they warn you about, but I didn't. <laughs> no, they don't. No, and then as women, your hormones change. And, you know, and then then your body stores stores it in different ways. I, you know, for people who are listening, who are like, God, I've just always struggled with this. Um, one of the things that I have adopted are my exercise snacks. So like my exercise snacks are things I can do really quickly uh, when I'm standing in line. So, you know, I'll tell you, here's like my one of my favorite exercise snacks that Jess has us do a lot is just calf raises. Right. Just like really simple calf raises or I every time you get up from a chair, see if you can like really push through your heels to like push you up from your heels while keeping your knees out a little bit. Right. Exercise snacks literally might be just as simple as engaging your glutes. And nobody knows like I'm standing in line in the bank, but I am like I am working my, you know, and 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 part of that is that consistency. And again, with a goal to just take care of yourself. I as I age, I do think differently about 
endurance. I think differently about longevity. I think differently just about my health in a way that I didn't when I was younger. So I just sit there and go like, what can I do to make it better for me now, but also like future Sarah. Um, And so I, I do appreciate that perspective that you bring. Like it's about consistency of movement, not necessarily intensity or quantity, but just are we doing something you know, when I'm traveling a lot, you're always like, just get like a couple of simple little like, you know, squats in or whatever it is, just to kind of keep that that consistency going is so important. Jess, okay. we're winding down our time together. Since it's the first time you're on our show, I want to ask you the question we ask all of our new guests. It's been a while since we had a new guest. So this is fun. Jess, what's a conversation you've had with yourself or someone else that was transformative? Ooh, actually, I like our mailbox talks. Yeah, uh, when, yeah, yeah. When, when we're in our after our workout and our our, our, our you know neurons are firing. And yeah, Nick's like, I'm done. And you you both know, have fun, right? Right. I uh, I get very uh, idea fairy. Yeah, I love that you call them our mailbox talks. So just so people know, what happens is. Usually when we're done working out, I walk like Jess will walk out to her car and then I go and get the mail. And a lot of times we'll just stop and just talk about life or business or whatever. So that's why it's the mailbox talks. I love it. And it's my favorite. Uh, When you point out some when I like I said, I have to stop with myself with the absolutes. Mm. Um, When I put an absolute on any movement if it's glutes if i say men don't oh, like yeah. this move yeah <laughs> you know you're like oh i mean maybe because you pointed out yeah. you know but is that true or, or is that true sometimes <laughs> right exactly or all the time just change it. i like the way you prompt different thinking patterns uh, what's this? Oh, you're making this about though. me. Thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> I, love I mean, it. we all, I mean, we all get it. into that, right? Like of just, right. well, even just like you were talking about the absolutes of, oh, this is what workouts need to look like. And, yeah. but no, that's not what it needs to look like. And everything's just evolving all the time. Yeah. So that's something I'm trying to really focus on myself and my own patterns and behaviors, even in my thinking path, just everything, the way I think, the way I move. That I don't have to be so hard on myself yeah. because I, with movement, there's a little bit of just, you can become addicted to anything. Yeah. And I really do think that with myself, I overdo, I can overdo anything. <laughs> Talking, lashes, makeup, exercise, different movements that in my brain, I'll tell myself that if I don't do them, mm it's almost a fear of if I don't do them, will I look and feel the way I do? Will it cause me to be in pain? So a question I often ask myself is what if, will it really affect your day that much? If you don't move before your first client, if you don't get your whole complete workout in my anxiety will skyrocket. Yeah. But is that because I'm telling myself I'm not going to survive if I go to my first client without getting my own workout in. And then I've, it's been done before. And (laughs) Guess what? <laughs> Everything yeah. was fine. It yeah. was a great day. You survived it. Yep. Yeah. I did. Aren't we funny creatures? I love us. Jess, awesome. if people want to connect with you and learn more about, you know, you and your work. So I feel like I do. Before you say this, I do feel like I have to. I said at the top of the hour, I didn't love the name Jim guys. And I just have to explain sure. why. Like, uh, I was at an event and I th- saw Jim guys and I was like, that's not for me because I'm not a gym person. and I'm not a guy, but like I get the Z. Um, but then when the, when, when your boss explained like, no, we're the, we're the gym guys who come to you. We come to the people. And I was like, oh, well that you are for me then. Um, that's, that's why I don't love the name. Cause I think it's like, unless you know, the, the, it's just, it wasn't as clear for me anyway, but I do love working with you. And, uh, and not only do you work with people in person, but you also work with people virtually. So what is the best way for people to reach out to you who might be interested in learning more about the work you do? Uh, you can reach out on Instagram, Facebook. It is just moves it. <laughs> we'll put this, we'll put this all in the note. Just moves it. Like just move yep. it. You guys get it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. It, it sticks. Uh, or gym guys. Uh, mm-hmm. so you just search gym guys, all caps with a Z. 
it uh, it'll search your area. If there's trainers in the area, uh, you can do virtual if you have someone specific you'd like to stick with. Uh, you don't have to have a specific goal. What's cool about Gym Guys is they try their best to match you with a trainer that meets the goals that you're looking for. Yeah, and that can change and evolve. So yeah, I like. Yeah. I really do enjoy the company, specifically Iowa and our. Um, team because there's a lot of support. Um, my boss, Jade, she reaches out to clients to ensure that they're getting their needs met often. Yeah. And we talk about sometimes we bug clients too much <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, we're reaching out to make sure they're getting their needs met. If they're wanting to do an assessment yeah. to see their uh, goals, if they or not set the bias on higher or not. Yeah. Yep. Um, some numbers don't work well for some people and yeah. I'm one of them because yeah. I get obsessive. So it's valuable for some and not for others. Yeah. And I really enjoy the support and, and the different services that we offer. So assisted stretch in home, um, balance training for mm-hmm. seniors mm-hmm. Done that. Um, if you're having behavioral issues with children, mm. I am spectrum myself with ADD or ADHD. If you couldn't tell <laughs> and exercise really mm. was something that was underrated but I felt right away from yeah. movement and especially learning and retaining information and mood and management and some behavioral issues. It helps with children, with adults too. Yeah, sure does. <laughs> and I love that we can cater to all of that, which is really nice yoga. Yeah, all of that. So we'll put all of that in the show notes. Jess, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for keeping thanks me for moving. Me. Yes. And I appreciate it was you. An honor. I appreciate you. We'll have another chat here soon. When we, we will. Work out. <laughs> yeah, we will. We'll do a mailbox talk. We'll let everyone know. Yes. We'll take a picture and post it on social. We'll do a mailbox chat. All right. Thanks so much, Jess. <laughs> Thank you so much. Our guest this week has been Jessica McCauley. And one of the things that I'm holding on to is just that reminder of consistency, consistency over intensity, consistency over quantity. Uh, And that just that reminder of breath that has been really transformative for me and the work that I'm doing with Jess and something that I've forgotten about from my theater days. We just forget to breathe. So we want to hear from you what resonated for you, what came up for you. You can always reach out to me on social media where my DMs are always open. You can send me an email at podcast at com. If you'd like to support the show, please be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the show on your preferred podcast platform. This helps helps us get exposure and continue to have really great guests and conversations like we did with Jess today. Also, if you want to support the team that makes this show possible, you can become a patron. Go to patreon.com slash conversations on conversations where your financial support, 100% of it, will go to support the team that makes this show possible and you'll get really great swag. So speaking of the team, let's give them a shout out. So to our producer, Nick Wilson, our sound editor, Drew Knoll, our transcriptionist, Becky Reinert, our marketing consultant Jessica Burge and the rest of the Snowco crew. Thank you. And to each of you, thank you for joining us. And thank you to Jess McCauley for coming on today. This has been Conversations on Conversations. Thank you all so much for listening. And remember, when we can change the conversations we have with ourselves and others, we can change the world. So please be sure to rest, rehydrate, move, and we'll see you again next week.